33 pallet positions, 323 tools. So that gives you tremendous capability to load up 33 different billets. You could have 33 unique part numbers loaded up on this machine and able to, able to be cut lights out. Welcome back to MTD CNC, my friends. Thank you all for tuning in. We do appreciate you and we love to help you understand what's going on in this incredible industry. Today, I'm standing in front of this beautiful Yazda machine with my buddy Kevin, and we're gonna talk about automation, precision, some of the things that we know. However, there is a possibility that you guys might be seeing a factory tour at Yazda coming from MTD CNC thanks to my buddy Kevin here. So stay tuned for that as well. Kevin, how are we today? Let's talk Yazda, one of our favorite subjects, right? I love talking Yazda, Tony. And, and uh, I mean, it's fun to talk about the most accurate machine tool in the world. I, I love it. Anybody who's in this industry has to want to see what's going on with Yazda behind the scenes. So I'm excited about potentially getting you the opportunity to see that firsthand. Um, I got a chance to go see it in June this year myself. I think I was the first foreigner to visit Yazda since COVID you know, became a thing. And uh, now that things are opening up again, I think we can maybe get you in. So stay tuned, hopefully good news coming up in the near future. Kevin, they must like you and for good reason to let you be one of the first ones, if not the first one to come in. So congratulations. Let's talk firstly about the precision because if we're going to go into this factory maybe we won't give away the secrets guys don't get me wrong but we will be able to showcase something let's talk about the history of Yazda where this comes from because it takes a real passion and a real dedication for decades of time to be known as the world leader in accuracy and precision doesn't it yeah absolutely and you know Yazda really started as a company making jig bores um, you know making parts that really were designed for performance jig boring and it's evolved into machines like this PX30i that take that jig boring capability and turn it into a very precision parts making machine. So one of the things that you'd see at the factory is the attention to detail, the attention to every aspect of building a machine that has those types of precision tolerances. So it all starts at Yazda with hand scraping. Um, and that's probably the most unique thing that you'll see at Yazda compared to any other machine tool builder is the amount of hand scraping that goes into these machines. It's literally the bottleneck when it comes to building one of these Yazdas. So there are tens and, and maybe more than that of hand scrapers that are just working all day. Every mating element of these Yazdas is hand scraped. So there's ultimate precision, ultimate geometric perfection with how these machines are put together. And it's part of the reason that gives Yasa the ability to have such precision tolerances and for those tolerances to last for the lifetime of the machine because the machine fits together perfectly and just doesn't move over time. You know, I've said this quote before when we talk about the lifetime of the machine, but I want to say it again is I'm too poor to buy cheap, meaning how many times are we going to buy multiple machines as they break down over time versus investing in one that's going to have that reliability for decades to come. Now that choice is yours, but it's something worth discussing internally as well when we think about that. Now they taught you how to do hand scraping when you went there, right? Well, I, I did the Japanese way. The, the American way is to you know push with your Popeye arms. Uh, the Japanese have figured it out ergonomically a little bit better. So you know, you kind of get that sexy scraping motion. I don't know if you can use that one, Tony, on camera, but um, yeah, they it's uh, it's kind of that rhythmic motion using the whole body, and and the guys that do that are uh, very well trained. They know what they're doing, and uh, you can try it maybe yourself, Tony, when you're over there and see if you can see if you can get it working for you. But uh, it's uh, it's it's impressive watching those guys go to work. Well, I hope we get to keep that because it is an express, a, a, a sexy motion that goes along with it. And it takes time and learning and education and experience and wisdom to do that. Now, you mentioned the evolution as well. And we are standing in front of this PX30i, which is a beautiful evolution. And we're yeah. talking about automation as a whole, obviously domestically with all the reshoring going on. But globally, automation is key right now for you know, financial profitability for productivity, yeah. all these ivities at the end of these words that we're right. trying to create. So let's talk about the pallet change system, how pallet helps someone create that lights out production and how Yazda focuses on that as well. Yeah, absolutely. And we know productivity, um, you know, the ability to make parts without someone standing in front of the machine tool is critically important because we're not getting more people coming into the workforce, we're getting less people coming into the manufacturing workforce. So 
having the opportunity to have the machine staffed during one shift and to load that machine up and be able to run one shift or multiple shifts without being attended is huge. It's huge for profitability. Every shop owner out there should be paying attention to the ability to get free productivity off your machine during off shifts. It's just, it's a huge part of taking one of these machines and justifying it over a much shorter time frame than if you've got three shifts of manpower standing in front of the machine. And that's if you can find manpower for those three shifts. It's impossible for a lot of businesses to find those people. You're exactly right. And I won't go into too much detail, but I've been into shops where they've actually taken their third shift, put it into second shift so no one lost their job, but they're creating more productivity with less shifts, yep. which allow them to make more money. So what you're saying is exactly right. Now, I want to talk about the concept of the pallet change when we think of high mix, low volume, right. and the ability that if a hot job comes in, we can probably finish the one we're doing, but put a new one in right after that, to have that ability to get hot jobs done and have high mix, low volume, so we're not just focused on, you know, 18 products at one time or 100 products at one time right. because a lot of us still when we think about automation we're thinking in the hundreds and the thousands and the ten of thousands and that's the only way to do it which isn't the case anymore yeah no and most people running these machines are not talking those kinds of volumes they're talking about high mix relatively low volume on the px30 i yazda's come up with i think probably the ultimate combination of number of pallets and number of tools to complement the lights up production that we want to give our customers the ability to do. So this machine has 33 pallet stations integrated into the machine. So that's complete integration, not a third party coming in and, and you know interfacing with a robot. It's integrated by the machine tool builder into the machine. 33 pallet positions, 323 tools. So that gives you tremendous capability to load up 33 different billets. You could have 33 unique part numbers loaded up on this machine and able to, able to be cut lights out. Um, absolutely huge when it comes to getting profitability off of the machine. And then as you know, Tony, able to, to run those parts correctly overnight means that you need accuracy. So the more accurate the machine tool when you don't have an operator sitting in front of it or a machinist who can actually adjust and, and, and make adjustments based on what's happening, um, the more accurate the better when it comes to trusting that machine to have good parts sitting on the pallet station when you come back in, in the morning and um, start unloading those, those good parts that were machined. You know, Kevin, you actually beat me to my next question so well done, which allows me to go to my question after that because it was going to be how important is it to come in after a weekend or after a night and have the, the know that you're going to walk into parts that are good and you don't Maybe you haven't even had to check all of them. Now, we should check all of them, but we know that they're going to come off good, and we don't have that stress of coming in the next day going, oh, my gosh, are they going to be okay? We have that reliability. But I want to go back to the tooling real quick, since you've already answered that previous one. How important is it to have so many tools when we have this many pallets to either do redundant tooling to make sure that we have backups on harder material or an abundance of tooling for all the different jobs if we're going to have a bunch of jobs? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I see a lot of machine tools out there that may have this number of pallets, but they often don't have a large enough number of tools to complement that, Tony. And I've been selling in this industry for about 30, well, I'm not, I'm not going to give you the exact number, but let's just say over 30 in less than 40 years. And I don't think in that time I've had one customer ever come to me and say, Kevin, I really wish I would have bought a smaller tool changer just doesn't happen. Um, the more tools you have, the better. And you don't need to utilize all the pockets, it's not necessary, but it's really nice to have that 323 position tool changer to give you the flexibility to tool it to handle, you know, up to 33 different parts. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And yeah. being fair, walking around most machine shops, they're not all full, except there are times when they are all full, depending on the jobs that come in. And a lot of job shops can utilize this type of potential, but it's not gonna be every day all the time. But how expensive can it be to add something later or to not have it and have to do two different setups instead of having everything on one setup? Whatever that complication might be, I'd personally rather have more than less. Absolutely, and it's disruptive to add things late. It's always more expensive to retrofit things and it's disruptive to your shop. So having the right number of tools up front, having that capability is just, uh, it, it gives you a lot of flexibility and frankly makes the machine less of an issue down the road. I agree with you, Kevin. Now I want to talk a little bit about what we're making here today because I'm absolutely sure the people that are watching right now have been staring at this Mandalorian helmet over my right shoulder with the fifth axis work holding 
and this gorgeous mug. So we're not actually drinking coolant out of this, I don't think. We're actually gonna anodize these and put something delicious in here, right? Yeah, we, we will. And I mean, most of us in the industry probably have enough coolant in our system already where you don't need to drink any. So, you know, um, no, it's this is kind of more for the showcase display, but yeah, we've got these cool methods mugs that we're machining that just highlights some of the accuracy and surface finish that you can get off the PX30i. Um, I just find a lot of customers that make parts like this or the Mandalorian helmet for that matter uh, you know again machine tools I think we kind of can't treat them as as fun from time to time and and maybe and um, parts like this are, are frankly cool and they showcase the accurate capability that a machine like a yacht has making your medical parts your aerospace parts or your semiconductor parts to very precision tolerance holding a tenth or less. If we can do this, we can do those parts. So that's what we're trying to kind of demonstrate for our customers. Yeah, and, and that goes twofold from my side of things. A, it looks really cool. And B, if we can do this, we can do those other parts as well. So we're showcasing the capabilities in a fun way. So let's sometimes not overthink these cool demos that are being done because they are a lot of fun. They do create uh, uh, inspiration to create something and sometimes there's even a little bit of competition about what we're gonna what are we gonna make next right so if we're doing these things we know that we can make the parts for the industry as well appreciate you all watching this is my buddy Kevin this is accuracy precision reliability automation of the Yazda machine this is the Mandalorian helmet this is the methods mug stop by get yourself one give methods a call they might just hollow this thing out for you and let you wear it who knows the creativity here is a lot of fun kevin thank you so much as always for joining me we'll see you in japan we'll see you in japan as well